Hello, how are you? Hopefully you are doing great today. As you can see, uh, my this company and uh, what I'm trying to do is the PepsiCo. The PepsiCo, the ticker name is Pep, the Pep P P, and basically it's nothing more than but it's it has a Pepsi, Lay's, Tropicana, Quaker, and Quater if I'm not mistaken. So this is the drinks. So few days ago I did a coke as well and now I'm doing the the Pepsi video on the to analyze stocks so agenda for today is as you can notice I have a lot of list of the ticker names uh, people uh, personally uh, who knows me and also on from the YouTube I got a big list for this weekend so rather than copying paste to the PowerPoint I thought why not just go to the slides uh, sorry to the spreadsheet and do that so here my focus is I'll go first uh, won't spend too much time first go try to use the model and uh, get the price and if the price looks okay then we'll go our journey uh, a little bit ahead right so try uh, to understand more on from a different perspective or even if the price looks from the fair value perspective if it doesn't look then I'll just stop it's just a different approach what I used to do before I try to understand the business and then come to the modeling and pricing later on right so that's what uh, you find a little change so without any delay let's get started so if you're new to my channel myself Pramod Kumar as you can see on the screen I'm a CFA chart holder and FRM certified and this is my website okay and in my channel I most uh, I perform the fundamental analysis of stocks uh, and just try to put my opinion usually from YouTube or personal they uh, request some ticker names so I'll try to put on my list as well okay so let's get started without further delay so uh, this is as you can see this is the top returns hopefully let me put myself on height so you can easily see so these are three level high three high level returns and then we uh, go for the enterprise value multiple see how the company stands do some kind of a industrial quick comparison and then go for the dividend discount model free cash flow model and and then so on in the journey so it's a pretty interesting journey so please uh, be connected and let's see okay so the return on investment capital if you can see from the past five years uh, the 2015 to 2019 uh, it's this is from their 10k so this is quite good right so this blue line is the return on investment capital which is closer to coming now to 20 uh, 16.93 it's mentioned here and the return on equity is uh, way higher right it's uh, closer to 50 percent which is very good it started in five years ago around 45 and then it jumps a lot and then come down again the return on asset is consistently it's single digits uh, and it's growing it will grow from 7.83 percent to uh, in 18 it was huge it's jump we can see and then nine it come back to around 9.31 percent okay so that's the overall from the high level so let's go from the enterprise uh, multiple so two key enterprise multiple which uh, basically who like to buy the whole company from that perspective they like to see right so this is from the, again from five year to now uh, the latest what i got it and then this is the uh, the average for of two multiples the blue shows the ev or ebita ebit and then we add some uh, depreciation on EBIT, so we get EBITDA. So I'll mostly people take uh, EBITDA, but I'll try to uh, stick with EBIT because this is EBIT is more uh, like the actual operation, uh, the, the the revenue, and uh, so that's uh, we better make sense, right? Because there is some depreciation on all, although that's we are not taking out but that kind of a capital if you if you see we need to as a company to set aside to buy the new machinery right to invest and all so if you want to be less conservative we can take but a little bit more conservative i think blue line makes more sense okay so let's start so from 2015 to it was uh, so basically the average is around 15 right little over 15 for it 17.56 uh, seven here right but at the moment the company is looks pretty very uh, expensive right it's goes to 21 so don't get uh, 
distracted here oh the enterprise values goes up uh, then then the company is doing good no enterprise value can go up by uh, many other factor but we have to think how much the how much the the bottom line the revenue is company or the operational income is the better word here right for ev is company is generating if the company is generating good operational income doesn't matter what uh, so the, it can uh, double itself in uh, that year but right now if now if it need to do that it will take on average uh, 17.57 years right and in case of if you add depression is little shy of 15 so but still around that so f for the industry i think the better is the 10 or lower is good it's a little bit higher from that side so uh, and and also higher at the moment from the average perspective but it right so okay let's continue our journey so now if i see from the okay so this is a little bit if i see this is the data i got from uh, the internet so these are the different tickers the industries for example we have coke here uh, and ko one is i think is a bottling company and this is a, the real coke that company so this ko if you can compare or this is the pepsi i highlighted in green and these are only i have picked up which are over over 2 billion and over in terms of the market cap right so here uh, if i just want to compare with the the median peg ratio which is coming as 3.25 you can see both uh, Pepsi and Coke are pretty expensive at the at the moment, right? Based on the peg, because uh, right. So even if I compare with their uh, industrial uh, PE with the industrial median, which is 22.5, the Coke in that sense coming cheaper as compared to Pepsi. So Pepsi is a little bit more exp coming basically a little bit more expensive as compared to the industrial uh, median, right? okay so we have seen the the return top return so let's go back to our financial to say okay what makes that return so what driving that return right so this is the the key ratio a uh, very good model to use that is called the pratt model in this pratt model maybe i can put myself back in this pratt model basically we have the net profit margin so again this is for five years so so this is the latest one uh, in december 2019 on the right i try to keep uh, from the left to right uh, that pattern so hopefully i don't have to remind every time on each slide just to save time as well so if you can see here what driving the return on equity is pretty much what i can see here if i compare with the the profit margin is not uh, that it's below from its average right or if you can see from here uh, the historical it was 8.5 okay from december 15 it reduced then it increased so it's up and down but on the operating margin side if it, it's improved tax burden basically companies retaining more and then asset turnover is not doing very well maybe they need to buy more assets but the assets are not utilized as but it's still not bad if you see uh, if i remove the december 15 so it's little over its average right 0.86 as compared to 85 but one thing to stand out here and i think which is normal for these um, pretty uh, big companies i also find or uh, which has been this industry for long like a very mega large cap companies they have a huge uh, debt and they keep issuing the debt at the lower rate and buying the equity because they have a cash flow they have a machinery to run but still uh, the financial leverage so which is saying 5.31 is insane honestly and this is coming from their book value right just don't compare from their market value because market value of equity is higher so using that we got uh, model we get the higher growth of 19.70 okay so why i'm showing this Be because we need to use this number first model which we use is our uh, the model which is called dividend discount model 
uh, because the company is uh, giving dividend and then we'll use the free cash flow model to come up with the price and then we use the both model to come up with the price our value right okay so one of the uh, input we get from here from this model the another model uh, which we use is the kappa model is called uh, to get the required return okay so in this model i expect the expected market return uh, is 10 percent right and that's on average 10 year market return will be around 10 to 12 so pretty much it goes around 10 and because of coronavirus a little bit more so i'll just put it 10. the beta for this uh, pepsi is 0.59 and the risk free rate is uh, i use the u.s treasury uh, the latest uh, over 10 year uh, tenor period right which has come as 1.08 i plug this number into the model and then I got this 6.34 uh, percent as come as the required return expected for the uh, for this company Pepsi. Okay, so I have uh, my key num numbers which I needed. So let's go to the model. So this model I got I show already show you how I get 6.34. The the high growth. So uh, it's 19.7. I have shown it to you, which is coming from here, the, from the Pratt model. So now what I'm doing, the long-term growth, I'm taking as 2%, which is, I'm saying, okay, after uh, 10 years, the company grows. I assume the US economy can grow by 2%. Although here, I'm a little bit more conservative. And now you think why you are conservative, right? Maybe based on the books it should be okay the one reason for that is the pepsi is not just a u.s company it's a u.s company but it's present global present so maybe the u.s long term is a uh, developed economic grow by two or two and a half percent but other part of the countries like brazil or india or, or china or other country where the pepsi is uh, have its market presence they are growing at the higher rate so from that perspective we can have a uh, even higher uh, growth there right so think from that perspective but i'm a little bit more conservative uh, <laughs> i didn't capture that so it's, and uh, just put the two person there okay so to come to the terminal value as you can see i use two different models as well Okay, before I go there, maybe I'll show, okay, I'll use the 10 year of forecasting and then from 19.7, which is the high growth rate, and then I discount every year. Uh, basically, it's just using the interpolation and then come down to 2% to for 10 years, right? So you say it's pretty much dropping every year. So that's how I, I have used it. And then second thing is on the uh, terminal value, I took two approaches. So first approach, uh, I take the the median of the industry, which is 22.6. So if you can notice, that's uh, somewhere from here, 22.59 or 6. And the second thing is I use the uh, matured uh, garden growth model to get the perpetuity uh, growth rate, right? Whichever giving me the minimum, uh, honestly the number the terminal value i'm using that right so i'm using that the minimum of that is as you can see just to be a little bit more conservative from that both sides so once i plug the number that's all easy i have this growth present value and then i got my market price for this intrinsic value is 183 right which is sum of all which is a higher than what is right now is in the market okay Okay, so this is one model. Let's go to the uh, next model. Next model is free cash flow model. And for free cash flow, if I come here, I took the, so I need all the rates. So for the long term, uh, okay. So the short term uh, growth rate, I use uh, the another model to come up with the uh, short term growth rate for, for the free cash flow equity. I don't like to use the historical uh, method, especially for the very long term 10 years because the history may not repeat in future. So that's one. So that's why I try to use the latest 
uh, at least a five year trend uh, because th and then try to project it uh, use the model based on the model and then what model says and uh, and two different two or three different model and then try to take the ratio of those and try to use that so pretty much that's what my approach is and uh, try to be a little bit <laughs> conservative when i take the input just to be safe then sorry right <laughs> Okay, so the long-term uh, growth rate again, I take 2%. The f required return is for the free cash flow. Uh, we cannot take the, uh, the ca using the capital because free cash flow also has the debt. So we have to take the weighted average uh, cost of capital, which is here. In the weighted average cost of capital, the required return for equity is 6.34, which I already have shown to you. And this is the the market value of uh, the equity. The the debt fair value is 29 billion, and then when I do the weight, it's coming 13.43 percent, and uh, equity is coming 86 or almost 87 percent. Okay, now the re required return for the debt. Basically, what I did it, I you I take from the 10k, and I just pick the. So this is the highest debt they have, 18 billion, which is coming in 25 to 2049 time period. And if you can see, this is 3.7. So I have used this one. So it's between 3.4 to 3.7. So I have used 3.7 and then just do the simple math. And I got 5.99%. Uh, right here, I can also use the I can also use the tax rate one minus, minus tax to uh, reduce the the number. Let me show you how. Just a minute. Okay, so I have used the effective tax rate uh, here in the calculation, and then a model gives a little bit more benefit. And now it's you can see it's 5.90. So this is the one. So basically the 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 average tax I use the average tax rate whatever uh, I got from uh, here right so this is my effective tax rate coming as seventeen point four eight percent I can uh, okay so the next one is once I have these numbers then uh, yeah so again then I'll uh, discount the growth rate to I discount the growth rate to the so rest is uh, pretty straightforward right so the growth rate again uh, uh, I have uh, discount uh, I have uh, dropped it to 2% and then uh, using the interpolations this is my free cash flow the again the long term growth is here the long term growth basically I have 2% or I have taken the uh, the terminal value as 9.92 right just to be conservative usually it can be around 10 to 15 but depend upon this growth uh, i got this number and then my required return which is coming from vac is 5.90 so when i plug the number i got my per share value is only 72.69 dollars one of the reason there is because pepsi is only uh, retaining 31% average uh, of their money and 70% or more it's giving back uh, to the shareholder and in top of that they also does the share buyback right based on the cash so they are very efficiently using the money so that we can see and so the whatever the money they have basically so if I use the two model but that's the number what I got it so with the different discount model, I advise us getting 183, and with the free cash flow model, I get 72.69. I take a ratio of 60-40, and then I got the 138.92. It's your personal choice how you want to do it. The reason for me to put the higher weight on the uh, uh, different discount model is. Uh, for the two reasons one is because i haven't even uh, uh, i think the company is doing a good job as a global company and then it's clear it's reflecting much better uh, and is giving the money back and from the the buyer of the shares and i have much more interest in their dividend 
and the share you purchase and without e and even i have didn't count any share you purchase there but i'll show you in the next slide how the share you purchase happens so that's it so i'm getting the my final price of 138 at moment when i'm do, uh, recording this video the market price is around 136.20 dollars and so it's pretty much when uh, if i say it's a fair value but if i add the margin of safety if you want to 20 or 10 depend upon the people right it can be 125 uh, dollar as well right to the intrinsic value uh, but we have to see so so far even if i see from the 138 perspective and since this is the global brand uh, let's see how the company does one thing to for me to still to check now i got my number and i'm pretty okay the next thing i want to check is how the liquidity how the company is doing from the uh, in the coronavirus time are it dropping a lot or still printing the money right so these are the things is also important rather than a single number so let's go and find out that now since we are more comfortable with this our number so okay so so far if you like this video i'll such request you to please give a thumbs up to this video and uh, so more and more people will like it and uh, appreciate uh, your time okay so, and also comment if you want me to cover any other video okay so let's continue our journey so if i compare now with the ebit and the profit margin i can see the company is doing pretty well in terms of the profit margin right it's in, again, of, uh, i think this is the little bit of a skew uh, or like uh, in uh, 18 but overall the company is doing uh, pretty well consistently right they in the profit margin so it's around uh, over to 10 percent and operating margin is over 20 percent consistently right so that's good let's see the liquidity side on the liquidity side uh, this is uh, this is our benchmark let's say one so the liquidity uh, on the both the current ratio quick ratio and catch ratio is lower right uh, that's lower so it's coming so it's i didn't like it. it's 0.86 a little bit lower than one and the quick and cash ratio is pretty lower so i think the company need to do to bump up the liquidity a little bit more uh, so i'm i'm not very happy on this let's say on the operating cash flow okay on the operating cash flow side the company's wow the company is very consistent in generating the operating cash flow that's that's very very good it's 10 billion 10.8 10.4 10 and a little bit less than 10 right so it's very very good cash used for financing mostly is, is used for pay dividend buyback shares that's what usually i find the trend so that's why it is neg uh, negative right the, this gray area and here seems like this is positive because recently i read there they have raised the they're they're basically raising the debt right because that they can as you can see when we calculate the vac they can do on the lower discount right so i'm not very uh, skeptical on that okay so now let's see how the company does on the uh, in the event of the coronavirus so here what from their quarterly 10q uh, income statement so this is the past 12 weeks and the past 24 weeks comparison right so this is uh, so this is 2020 and this is on 2019 so one year back so this year 12 weeks and the last year 12 weeks so pretty much like a one quarter so this is one quarter and this is two quarter right two quarters so like a six month so let's see so th if you can see the net revenue right the net revenue is 15 billion where it was 16 billion so its revenue is dropped but the revenue doesn't drop very significantly right it's dropped very minimal which is a very good uh, plus sign because i was expecting most of the shops and other things are closed so how people are drinking so it seems like the pepsi is doing a pretty uh, good job and one of the things i also like to highlight here if you might have not noticed maybe it's a good point to bring here look at the brand right if i come to my intro again look at this brand right if i forget about for a minute on this pepsi 
this is very popular right lays and tropicana is the brand itself 100% juice whenever somebody say juice 100% tropic uh, tropicana is the number one choice similarly i think the energy drink wise the getter is good as well and lays chips is also has a good history behind it so from that perspective i think if the company can i think the company maybe is doing well maybe because people are staying home and then ordering online these these drinks and enjoying right so that's i'm happy on that okay so the sng expenses pretty much a little bit over uh, which is understood because now the company has to pay premium to their staff operating revenue is lower for sure because the net revenue is lower and then overall it reflects everything okay i don't want to go here if you want to read you can just stop it the video and go through it i don't want to this video to go more the next thing is as you can see here is the share repurchase plan which i like to highlight so this chart i got it so this is the uh, the year over year the quarterly growth right you see their shares they keep buying the share it was 1.48 billion around before 2015 or so right and now it's less 0.8 billion so it's only left 1.4 so pretty much they are buying share at 1.2 or 1.5 percent ratio so add that on your return as well right so not only the dividend we are getting we are also getting the share buyback from the company so overall if i see i understand the companies from the uh, we can if we ignore the margin of safety and uh, other perspective the company is little bit maybe over uh, than its uh, fair value but that's not maybe a few dollars different i find but if i see from the global brand perspective and a stability perspective i think this is a very good company the company is doing very well uh, diversifying into another drinks ch and chips area and uh, this company has uh, some solid uh, foundation so that's my take on it and uh, i also have some shares on the company uh, not a lot but uh, i'll see if some market crash comes maybe i'll go again uh, for this pepsi uh, i think the pepsi will stay as a long key player and that's what my take on it let me know what you think about it and please uh, do like and let the comment if any other stock you want me to review next time so how about you find uh, this kind of a pattern uh, let me know if you uh, like it or what's your opinion and which stock you want me to cover next i'll put in my list thank you and see you soon in next video and thank bye for now